Hey guys, welcome back to another Genshin Impact Guide. Today I'm going to teach you about the endgame artifact grind starting at AR45 and up. I have done the endgame artifact grind for 4 accounts now, all at world level 8. I've learned many tips and tricks along the way that I would like to teach you all. We will talk about setting short and long term goals, what is considered a good artifact, which artifacts to prioritize, tips and tricks for rolling for substats, endgame stats and much more. Before we get started, please make sure to like and subscribe as I will be making more in-depth Genshin guides like this one. Also make sure to stop by one of my streams at twitch.tv slash frenchtutor underscore. Alright then, let's get started. A quick disclaimer, it's no secret that artifacts are heavily influenced by RNG and can make grinding for them a pain. To increase your chances of getting good artifacts, you should start once you reach AR45 since you are guaranteed the 5 star artifact every domain run. Also, if you have taken the advice of veteran players, you should have most of your fragile resin saved up for this moment, but if you didn't, don't worry about it too much. And lastly, to save time on your domain runs, make sure to use condensed resin. For this guide, we will be focusing mainly on improving the damage of your main DPS characters, so we will be prioritizing certain main stats and substats. We will briefly go over artifacts for support characters at the end as well. First, before we learn what are considered good artifacts and which artifacts you should prioritize and look for, let's briefly go over the main stats of each type of artifact so you can understand this guide better. The Flower and Feather both have fixed main stats of HP and Flat Attack respectively, which gives you better odds of finding good artifacts unless you focus on just the substats. It's different with the Sands, Goblet, and the Headpiece because you need to first find the correct main stats. Since this guide is more focused on dealing more damage, you want to look for an attack percent sans, elemental or physical damage bonus goblet, and either a crit rate or crit damage headpiece. However, there are a few exceptions for these main stats. For example, Hu Tao needs a HP percent sans as opposed to attack percent, so make sure you do your research on your characters before looking for specific artifacts. You can look up character guides on YouTube or you can ask in character discords to make sure. And if you're interested to see what other main stats the Sands, Goblet, and Headpiece can give, I will leave a link down below. So what is considered a good artifact? There is no official set standard of what makes an artifact good since that is very subjective. However, there are artifacts with the correct substats that are proven to significantly increase your damage and any Genshin player can look at these artifacts and agree that they're considered good. For flowers, feathers, sands, and goblets, a good artifact has both crit rate and crit damage, and at least 3 crit stat rolls. Having both crit rate and crit damage significantly increases the damage of your DPS characters. There are a few exceptions for sands and goblets which we'll talk about later, but generally this is the standard of a good artifact. And the most common artifact you will see with 3 crit stat rolls is what I like to call the 21-7 standard. But how can you tell it has 3 crit stat rolls? Here's a simple trick. Artifacts will have a base crit damage and base crit rate that have different ranges. But to simplify the numbers, just estimate each crit damage interval as around 7% and each crit rate interval as around 3.5%. So now you can easily see crit damage rolls are around multiples of 7 and crit rate rolls are around multiples of 3.5. So now if this artifact started at around 7% crit damage and around 3.5% crit rate, that means there are 2 rolls into crit damage which adds up to around 21% and 1 roll into crit rate which adds up to around 7%. Remember, these are just estimations so most players can understand better. But if you really want to know the exact numbers, I will leave a link down below. Here are a few more examples of the 21-7 standard artifact. Notice how some crit damage substats are below 21% and some crit rate substats are below 7%. It is again because we are just estimating but from a glance you can tell how many rolls there are now. The opposite of the 21-7 standard artifact is one with 2 crit rate rolls and 1 crit damage roll. This is just my personal opinion but I feel like these are less common for some reason and you'll see more artifacts with 3 or 4 rolls just into crit rate with no rolls into crit damage. In any case, you can also estimate the numbers the same way as shown before. A quick point about sands and goblets. Two crit rolls are acceptable in my opinion because it is very difficult and rare to have the correct main stats with both crit rate and crit damage. And when they have a single crit stat, I consider three rolls into one crit stat to be considered a good artifact. I wouldn't bother too much with flowers and feathers with a single crit stat unless you just started artifact farming. And here are some examples. 
Now headpieces are different because an artifact rule is that the main stat cannot be a substat. For example, if you have a crit rate main stat headpiece, you cannot have crit rate as a substat, which means you can't have both crit rate and crit damage. And the same goes with a headpiece with crit damage as a main stat. You cannot have crit damage as a substat. For headpieces with a single crit stat, two crit stat rolls are considered good, and it's very difficult to achieve this because there are three other substats you need to compete with, and rolling to just one crit stat is quite the challenge, and you even have to find the right main stat first too. And here are some examples. And what about the other substats? Once you commit to two substats, which should be both crit rate and crit damage, it is extremely difficult to have a favorable third and fourth substat. You'll drive yourself crazy if you want to have all perfect substats on one artifact. Trust me, I've tried on four accounts for almost a year now, and I've maybe gotten one or two perfect artifacts that match the character completely. Think of the other two substats as welcoming additions and bonuses. Most characters will benefit from attack percent substats, and some characters might prefer energy recharge like Eula for her amazing elemental burst, or HP% percent like Hu Tao which increases her damage and matches her kit. If you manage to get some decent 3rd or 4th substats, you should feel extra lucky, but because of Genshin's artifact RNG system, keep your expectations low. Now that you know what are considered good artifacts, let's learn the different kinds we need to prioritize and look for. I will do a separate section for just headpieces since their substats are slightly different. The first kind of artifact you want to prioritize and look for, and maybe an obvious choice, is one with both crit rate and crit damage with three substats. For flowers and feathers, these artifacts are rare, and for sands and goblets, very rare. The second kind of artifact is one with either crit rate or crit damage with three substats. On the surface, it doesn't look like a good artifact but they actually have hidden potential. When you level a 3 substat artifact to level 4, you get a chance to roll for a 4th substat, and there's a small chance you can roll for either crit rate or crit damage. Surprisingly, a lot of good artifacts are created this way, and is one of the tricks you should use when farming for artifacts. After watching this video, I suggest you look in your inventory for these types of artifacts and bring out the potential in them. What happens when you don't roll crit rate or crit damage? For flowers and feathers, I wouldn't level it more unless you just started farming for artifacts and can't find any artifact with both crit rate and crit damage. You have a decent chance of getting an artifact with both, so it may not be worth it. These are best used as fodder to level other artifacts, which I will show you later how. For sands and goblets with the correct main stats, I would level it and hope that it rolls into the single crit stat because even a single crit stat is rare for both sands and goblets. The third kind of artifact is one with both crit rate and crit damage with 4 substats. For flowers and feathers, these artifacts are very rare, and for sands and goblets, extremely rare. Because they are so rare, you don't have to actively look for these, but they are always a nice surprise when you get them. When you level a 4 substat artifact to level 4, you will roll into an existing substat, which gives you an extra chance to roll into crit rate or crit damage and increase the numbers even further. These have the potential to become the best artifacts possible, but the chances are still pretty low. The fourth kind of artifact is one that does not have either crit rate or crit damage with three substats. For flowers and feathers, these are your last resort artifacts where you try to roll for crit rate or crit damage for the fourth substat at level 4. In my opinion, these are not worth leveling. However, for sands and goblets, I would try to roll for a crit stat because again, it is rare to have the correct main stat and a single crit stat. If you do not end up rolling a crit stat, you may want to still use it to complete a 4 piece artifact set if you just started farming for artifacts. The last kind of artifact is one with no crit stat but has 4 substats, the worst artifacts possible but ironically very rare. For flowers and feathers, you can discard these. For sands and goblets, you may want to use them to complete a 4 piece artifact set if you just started farming for artifacts. Now for headpieces. First prioritize ones that have a crit stat with 3 substats. Then ones that have no crit stat with 3 substats so that you can try to roll for a crit stat at level 4. And finally, headpieces with a crit stat with 4 substats which are extremely rare. The last type of headpiece is one with no crit stat but has 4 substats. You may want to use them to complete a 4 piece artifact set if you just started farming for artifacts, otherwise you can use them as fodder. 
Now that you understand the basic standards of artifacts, it's time to level them and roll for substats. First, I'll show you the very basics, and then I will include some helpful tips and tricks I have learned along the way. Remember that there's no best way to level up artifacts. It's completely RNG, but I will add some of my personal tidbits. The first way to level artifacts is simply by auto-adding or manually adding artifacts to enhance and level them. For 3 substat artifacts, we learned that you will roll for a new substat at level 4, and then you will roll into an existing substat to increase its numbers at level 8, 12, 16, and finally 20. A total of 4 chances to roll into either crit rate or crit damage. For 4 substat artifacts, you will roll into an existing substat every multiples of 4 until level 20, which is a total of 5 chances to roll into either crit rate or crit damage. The odds will seem pretty low when you're trying to get 3 crit stat rolls out of 4 or 5 chances, but when you use this method, you'll notice that a lot of artifacts will stick to a certain stat as you level them up. Sometimes it will keep rolling into defense percent or flat attack, but when you get lucky, it will constantly roll into crit rate or crit damage. If you watch a lot of Genshin streams, you'll notice a lot of streamers level their artifacts this way because it's entertaining to watch streamers struggle or succeed. You'll notice how lucky they get, and you can experience the sticking phenomenon live. The second way to level artifacts is by using previously leveled up artifacts, mostly ones you don't need, to level up new ones. When you do this, artifacts will jump levels quickly. Depending on how high the level the artifact is, you can roll for one, several, or new substats in one enhancement by reaching levels that are multiples of four. Remember that the previously leveled artifacts are just fodder because they did not roll well and you did not get the desired outcome from them, so they would just be sitting in your inventory anyway. There should be level 4, 12, 16, or even level 20 artifacts that you may not be using because they did not roll correctly or you replaced them with better ones. One reason I like this method is because when I find a suitable artifact to level, I will know the outcome very quickly. To me, the odds become 50-50. Either I get a good artifact, or I don't, and I can simply move on to the next artifact. Plus, if it does turn out to be a bad artifact, I can use it to level another new artifact later. If you feel like you have terrible luck by using the first method, I'd say give this method a try. Just a few things to note. One is that there is artifact experience loss when doing this. For example, if you feed a level 4 artifact into a new one, it levels to 4, but, if you feed a level 16 artifact, it only levels it to 14. This is one reason why you want to use leveled up artifacts you don't need. Another thing to mention is that it costs you a one-time Mora fee to use a leveled up artifact. For example, using a 5-star artifact costs 3,780 Mora, but it doesn't matter what level the artifact is. You can see here a level 0 5-star artifact costs 3,780 Mora to use, and the same goes for a level 20 5-star artifact. Since this is the case, you are in a way getting some credit back for the Mora you used on the previous leveled up artifact. One last tip is that you should use leveled up artifacts as fodder when an artifact is already at level 4, except when an artifact has 4 substats already. Most of the time, I'm leveling an artifact to level 4 to roll for a crit stat or just to see what the 4th substat might be. You don't want to waste a high level artifact from level 0 if you don't know what an artifact's full potential may be. Now here are some tips and tricks you can use when leveling artifacts. When leveling an artifact to level 4 to roll for a new substat, simply auto-add 3 star artifacts twice, like this. Then, just add one 3-star artifact to get an artifact to level 4 without wasting any more artifacts and mora. You can also use a level 4 artifact you don't need to quickly level an artifact to level 4. Now here are some advanced tips. When leveling a level 4 artifact and you want to use already leveled artifacts to jump levels, here are some shortcuts you can use. Remember, you should only use artifacts you don't need as fodder. To get from level 4 to level 8, you can use 1 level 4 5 star artifact and 4 or 5 4 star artifacts. To get from level 4 to level 12, you can use 1 level 12 5 star artifact. To get from level 4 to level 16, you can use 1 level 16 5 star artifact and 3 to 5 4 star artifacts. To get from level 4 to level 20, you can use 1 level 20 5 star artifact and 2 level 4 5 star artifacts. With the 4 substat artifact, to get from level 0 to 20, you can use 1 level 20 5 star artifact, 1 level 8 5 star artifact, and 2 or 3 5 star artifacts. 
Next, let's talk about off pieces. An off piece is an extra fifth artifact you can use after completing a four piece artifact set. It can be any artifact from any artifact set, and since you have this kind of flexibility, you want your off piece to be the best it can be. A good off piece will balance and hold your build together, especially when your other artifacts are lacking good substats. This allows you to build a complete four piece artifact set more easily without sacrificing optimal substats. You don't always have to have the best artifacts for your third and fourth artifact if you have a good off piece to back them up. Most off pieces will be your goblet, headpiece, or sands since it is extremely difficult to get good ones with the correct main stats. Here are some examples of off pieces. My child is using a Veridescent Veneer Goblet with Hydro Damage Bonus and has 4 crit stat rolls. It's currently balancing my build because my headpiece has only 1 crit stat roll and my sands is still lacking crit damage. My Eula is using this feather as an off piece because I could not get a good Pale Flame Feather since I did not artifact grind much for her. Thankfully, my sands is very good with 4 crit stat rolls and my goblet is decent with 2 crit stat rolls. However, my headpiece has no rolls into crit damage and I am just using it to complete a 4 piece artifact set. Thanks to my off piece, it balances her stats pretty decently. So whenever you get artifacts with both crit rate and crit damage with the correct main stats, keep them, especially sands and goblets and headpieces with one crit stat. You never know when you'll need them and how good they'll turn out. Next, let's talk about when you should stop leveling an artifact. To be blunt, most artifacts will not roll correctly most of the time and require luck. Sometimes you either feel too invested or want to continue or you want to level it to 20 just to see what you get for fun. But when your resources and mora are limited, it's good to know a good stopping point. In general, I would give most artifacts a chance to redeem itself up to level 16. If you haven't rolled into any crit stat at this point like this artifact, I would say stop. Except if you either need the artifact to complete a 4 piece artifact set, especially if it's a sands, goblet, or headpiece, or the artifact is somehow better than the one you already have equipped. If you rolled into one crit stat so far, keep going for the sands, goblet, and headpiece. For flowers and feathers, I would only continue if it has the potential to be better than your currently equipped artifact, or you want to use the artifact as an off piece for another character. If you rolled into 2 crit stats so far, keep going if you have enough resources. You can also stop leveling an artifact at level 16 if the artifact is for a support character who doesn't deal that much damage. For example, I don't think it's worth investing in leveling my Chi Chi's flower to level 20 since it won't really increase her healing. However, I leveled my feather to level 20 here since Chi Chi heals more based on her attack, so she benefits from the flat attack main stat and the rolls into the attack percent. To me, it was worth investing in. Now that you understand how artifacts work, let's learn about attributes. You probably have heard this a million times before, but for optimal damage, you want to keep a 1 to 2 crit rate to crit damage ratio. For example, if you have 50% crit rate, ideally you want about 100% crit damage. This is a great guideline you can use so you have an idea what your build may look like. Now I highly recommend establishing short and long term goals so you know what attributes you want to reach and stop at. Not only does this keep you motivated, but also you will have a clear plan for your artifact grind. Your first short term goal should be reaching at least 50% crit rate. If you are critting less than half the time, it doesn't matter what your crit damage is. And when you follow the 1 to 2 golden ratio, you should have at least around 100% crit damage. 60% crit rate with 120% crit damage can be either your short or long term goal depending on if you're a casual or serious player. 70% crit rate and above is definitely a long term goal and a good stopping point for many players in my opinion. Keep in mind that some characters have crit ascension stats or a weapon with crit rate or crit damage. This helps you build characters more easily, so you can either follow the 1 to 2 golden ratio from this bonus attributes, or deviate from it by having a little more crit rate or crit damage than usual. For the last section of this guide, I wanted to talk a little bit about support builds. It's usually much easier to artifact farm for support characters because their main stats aren't as strict and don't need very high attributes. Many support characters will use many different main stats for their sands, goblets, and headpieces such as HP% percent, energy recharge, and elemental mastery. My advice before you build a support character is to read their talents thoroughly. For example, you can see that Diona will benefit from HP to increase her shield strength. After reading their talents, you can check character guides on YouTube or character discords to learn about all their different builds. 
Since I want my Diona to have a strong shield, her sands, goblet, and headpiece all have HP% percent as main stats. And for substats, I focused on flat HP and energy recharge to use her elemental burst often. You can see here I was able to get many rolls into flat HP to further strengthen her shield strength. Just a reminder, a main stat cannot be a substat, so I cannot have HP% percent as a substat. And for her attributes, I can disregard her crit rate and crit damage ratio since she is on my team to provide shields and healing, not damage. Support builds for certain characters that can deal damage such as Xingqiu, Bennett, and Kazuha can benefit greatly from crit rate and crit damage. If you do decide you want them to do some damage, try to get at least 50% crit rate and 100% crit damage. Then, depending on your goals, just follow the 1 to 2 crit rate to crit damage golden ratio again. Thank you very much for watching my artifact guide. It took me about 2 weeks to recreate some of the artifact scenarios for this guide and was very tough to make. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Also, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash frenchtutor underscore. Take care now.